Hey, welcome to Connection Over Coffee with me, Phil McCall of The Loneliness Guy. In this episode, we're going to check in to see how we're all going with making 2021 our year of authentic connection. But before we jump into this conversation, I need to say that this podcast contains content relating to the physical, mental and emotional well-being of gay men. If that's going to offend you or anybody in earshot, now's the time for you to go. But if you're down for a great chat, for checking in to see how you're going in terms of how you're doing Connection in 2021, how about you go and get us a table and I'll go get the coffee sorted. Hello YouTube, how are you? Welcome back, it's great to see you. Um, and yeah, let's have a just another just good chat uh, about how you're doing connection in 2021. You ready? You comfy? Um, all right, let's do it. All right, here you go. If this is the first time that you've joined me for coffee, uh, I want to say hi, welcome, it's great to have you. And if you are a repeat listener, a repeat watcher, on YouTube. I want to say hi. Welcome back. It's always awesome. Just lovely to have coffee with you, a beverage of some sort, wherever you are in the world. It's just really great to be able to connect with you for some moments every so often. But however you got here, whether you're watching on YouTube, whether you're joining me on, uh, uh, listening to me on, on a podcast, I want to say uh, that I recognise and am, uh, am very proud of you for simply pressing play because loneliness is loneliness is a concept, is an emotion that we really don't want to deal with. But it's part of the human condition, and every human, be we gay, be we straight, be we however we identify on the awesome spectrum of humanity, however we identify, loneliness is awful. We can feel like a failed human. We can feel like we are the only person in the world who has ever felt how we feel and think how we feel right now. And indeed, when we do feel lonely, we can think some really dark thoughts, we can feel some really horrible feelings that we might not have experienced before, but we also don't ask for help because there's a stigma to loneliness. So if you found yourself with your finger um, hovering over the play button before you reached, um, before you pressed play on, on however you're, you're um, joining me today, I want to say thank you. Thank you for working through that stigma. Uh, and I want to remind you to celebrate the very, well, the amazing courage. Might sound like a little thing, but it was actually quite big. Uh, the courage that you demonstrated in pressing play. So how about we have a chat about how we can help each other, how I can help you move beyond the awful thoughts and feelings of loneliness that you may have been experiencing. You may have come, may have come to your attention in the last little while. It may have been something that you've been aware of for a very long time. You may be listening to me because you've realised that you're lonely after coming uh, out of a relationship. You might be grieving the loss of someone or... It might actually be the slow burn of chronic loneliness. However, however you've arrived here, loneliness is loneliness is loneliness and it's horrible. It's horrible. But loneliness, we need to remember, is meant to be a temporary emotion. We, when we realise that we're lonely, when we need uh, authentic connection, we're meant to move to get that authentic connection. But because of the stigma of loneliness and saying words to the effect of, you know what, kind of lonely to those around us or even to ourselves, that makes us all feel uncomfortable because we can feel like we are a failed human. 
So we can sit, we can sit and wallow in our loneliness and what was meant to be a temporary state becomes chronic, becomes our default, the way that we live life uh, in that kind of default setting of feeling so utterly, utterly alone. And then when someone like me comes along saying, well, you know, you've got to put your authentic self out there, you can go, yep, yep, yeah, okay, sure, whatever, Phil. But, you know, it's, it's, it's not fair. It's not fair for me or anybody in internet land to say, you just need to do this. Because that just drips with loneliness. Uh, not drips with loneliness. That just drips with judgment. And that's really what we need. When we're feeling pretty shit about ourselves, that's what we need. We need, you know, the heaping of judgment on top of all of that because that really helps. No, <laughs> it doesn't help at all, does it? And when we're on the topic of judgment, the judgment of others pales, pales into insignificance when compared to the judgment that we heap upon ourselves. And indeed, we are capable of saying the most horrendous, awful things to ourselves when we feel, when we think, when we believe somehow that we're, we're excluded from the, um, the, 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 the wonderful human condition that, and everything that it brings. And somehow when we realize that we're loneliness, we, we judge ourselves for actually feeling a human emotion. Nope, not here, not at the loneliness guy, not having that, not putting up with that shit. Because that keeps us quiet, that keeps us small, and that actually prevents us from getting the real authentic connection that we need in our lives. But back to that point about, you know, the last thing that we need is someone coming along or, you know, in the internet saying, you just need to do this. You know, there's no easy way of working through your loneliness. And if there was a magic pill, if there was a, I don't know, like, I don't know, cross your heart and hope to die, spin round three times clockwise and then five times anti-clockwise and jump up and down on one foot or something like that, and that was the prescription to end loneliness. I don't know, you'd give it a go. You could give that a go. I haven't given that a go. Maybe, maybe I'm missing something. But there is no short, short, quick fix to loneliness. Because loneliness requires connection. And you know, when you're in the depths of loneliness and you're feeling pretty shit about yourself, you're feeling really like horrendous within yourself and questioning your worthiness, questioning, you know, your, your worthiness of being human. And, you know, these aren't really pleasant thoughts and feelings to grapple with. And, and so again, when someone comes along like me and says, you need to put your authentic self out there, yeah, if only, if only, remember, hop up and down, spin around, clockwise, anti-clockwise. But the way to work through the thoughts and feelings of loneliness is to work through them. That's, that's the only way. That's the only way. But you don't do it alone. And indeed, loneliness, the path back to connection, you need yourself. You need those most important to you and you need your community. So for those of you who have been long time uh, partakers of coffee with me, you'll realize, you'll, you'll know what I just said there were the three pillars of connection. So connection to self, connection to those most important to you and connection to community. Now when we talk about connection, when we hear connection, so either on the, lonely, uh, the loneliness guy, the lonely diplomat, um, or any of the other wonderful loneliness-related resources, uh, podcast, blogs, um, books, uh, etc. When we hear about that, that um, the cure to loneliness is connection, we can go, in our minds, go, ah, I need to connect with someone. 
I need to connect with my community. That's great. Yes, you do. You do. But unless you are connected with yourself, there's a risk. There's a risk there that you're not going to be connecting authentically with yourself. Uh, sorry, authentically with those most important to you and those in your communities, however you define communities. So that's what 2021 is all about, is all about your year, your year of authentic connection. Because it's one thing to say, right, need to work through loneliness, but it's not helpful if I was to, to not give you some tools to um, help you along your way of making 2021 your year of authentic connection. Now, 2021, your year of authentic connection came about, and this is in the first uh, um, blog post and podcast for 2021, because 2020 was pretty shit. And 2020 may have been the first time that we realised that we were lonely, when suddenly we had to stay apart from each other. We, we didn't have our regular life to distract us from the gnawing feeling uh, within us, and we had no other choice but to sit uncomfortably with the thoughts and feelings of our loneliness that may have been new and uncomfortable, or may have been there for a very long time and we simply weren't aware of them. So 2021 has become our year of authentic connection. And if you follow me on social media, particularly on Instagram, you'll see that almost all of my posts have the hashtag year of authentic connection. Um, and I don't know what that point was there. It's just, it just does. But it's all about bringing awareness of making decisions each and every time that we are uh, aware of them to choose connection and better yet to choose authentic connection but this is a big point of mine and as we come to the third check-in of the year we're doing this every quarter to make sure that we're aligning hoping wishing thinking um all the sort of things that we can do that that hoping that someone will come along and save us from our loneliness that someone will come along and that we wish someone will see us and and save us that's not an effective strategy hoping praying um you know, wishing is not an effective strategy because at some point that hoping, that wishing, that praying needs to become doing. You need to do connection. You can't simply wish for connection. And so I've got a technique, five simple questions that I have been inviting you to use to check in um, at least every quarter. And we're gonna do one of those check-ins in just a few minutes. But it's all about setting intentions, setting intentions. And this is something that we've been doing through this year in the premium subscribers group for The Loneliness Guy. And some weeks are better than others. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say that we're doing this every week. Um, but what we are doing is setting intentions, setting connection intentions, and then doing them. And if we need help in doing those, we ask for help and we give help. Um, and the setting of intentions is so phenomenally powerful because it takes away, well, not takes away, but, but, but builds on the hoping, the wishing, the praying and moves towards the doing. So setting an intention might actually be setting a schedule and scheduling time to talk to someone who you've not spoken to for years. It might actually be setting an intention to journal 
might be setting intention to do yoga or concentrate on your breath through meditation. Whatever it is, setting the intention is really powerful and is the key to unlocking the doing of connection that you know to be important for yourself. I feel like I'm getting ahead of myself here, but I'm just like this so much, so much that I need to, uh, that, 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 that this can actually do for us. This tool of setting intentions and doing this exercise regularly can help us kind of course correct through our, um, uh, uh, um, through the year and making sure that connection actually stays front of mind within us. All right, have you got a pen and paper? Because the pen and paper uh, in answering these questions is critical. This isn't, you know, if you're driving, if you're doing something right now um, where you can't sit and write, please press pause and go and, and come back when you've got a pen and paper and you can actually sit down. If, when I say pen and paper, you um, have opened up notes on your phone, no, no, pen and paper, please. Pen and paper is really important. It's key because there's a certain amount of deliberation that goes to when we write something down with a pen on a piece of paper. So while you're rummaging around, you might want to press pause for a pen and paper. But if you're now back, here are the five questions that I that, that constitute the check-in. And I invite you to write them down and then go through your answers to them. Okay? So the first question. Over the last three months, so uh, since episode 25, um, which I published in July, over the last three months. How connected to yourself have you felt? How have you been actively choosing to put your authentic self into the world? Question two. How connected to those most important to you have you felt? How did it feel to reach out to them? Number three, how connected to your community have you felt? How are you defining community? Number four, have you been setting weekly connection intentions? And number five, if you've not actively done connection, what have you chosen to do instead? And then there's a secret sixth question, which is the final question. The final question is, do you feel more connected? Now, if you didn't get, get to write those down, these are in uh, the Progress Check 3 blog post, uh, and uh, there's a link to that uh, that article um, on uh, in the episode description. But then you'll find those questions in there. But I invite you to sit and answer those questions truthfully. This is now the time to be truthful, not, not, not to judge. This is truth without judgment. This is the allowance of what is, not what should be, not beating ourselves up, not berating ourselves for what we should have done or how we should have done it or what was done to us. It's truth, simple, pure truth, just between you and you. Now, these questions are designed to prompt reflection and to, with the benefit of that reflection, to guide the setting of intentions for the next few months. And, to, and it moves it beyond the wishing, the hoping, the praying that 
um, that 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 you know the connection that you want, the connection that you need, and indeed the connection that you deserve as a human uh, will somehow magically um, magically happen. This actually brings on you, brings in you, uh, and into um, the rescuing yourself from loneliness, which was the topic of a podcast and blog post um, on how to meet your Prince Charming. And if you haven't read that article, if you haven't listened to that blog post, uh, listen to the blog post, do this all the time. If you haven't listened to the podcast or read the article, go and read it, go and listen to it. But if you, you know, just want me to say, the, the, your Prince Charming, he who will save you from your loneliness is you, is you. And hoping and wishing aren't effective strategies. So recognizing that you alone solve your loneliness, but you don't do it alone. You do it with the help, the, 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 the guidance, the support, of people in your corner, in your team, your friends, your family, those most important to you. And, um, you know, if, if you want, you can become a premium member of my site at thelonelinessguy.com where uh, there's a small group of us on Facebook where for $9.99 Australian a month, um, you can join us um, uh, after the first 30 days, you, you start paying, so you get a month free. You, you can join us in, uh, uh, in asking for and receiving help and giving help to uh, others when they post their connection intentions. But it's not fair for me to say you need to do this uh, and not do it myself. That would be you know, not very, not very kind and supportive of me. And it would actually feel very um, uh, disingenuine of me. So because make no mistake, while I'm the loneliness guy, I don't have, you know, I'm, I'm not suddenly immune to loneliness. I'm not, you know, above the human condition, far from it. I'm actually, you know, very much in the trenches of living my own life and muddling my way through. But years ago, I realized that I was lonely uh, and what thoughts and feelings of loneliness were leading me to do. And slowly but surely over a few years after getting help, after getting help with um, the awesome Mike Campbell, um, with whom you can get some, um, uh, you, you can enlist his support uh, through my website. Um, you, you, yeah, I, I, I found my way back to me and I committed to putting the authentic me into the world, however that looked like. And over the past few months, um, that's looked a certain way as it does. So for me, um, how I have felt connected to me is allowing things to not be okay. Now, I'm in Canberra, so for those of you who don't know, uh, that's the, the, the capital of Australia. Uh, and I'm, you know, in, in, in Canberra, and we're currently in a COVID-related lockdown and have been for uh, getting on to eight weeks now. Other parts of the country have been in lockdown for far longer. Um, and... But it's not fun. It's not fun being in lockdown. And one of the things that I realized is that, um, like, I, I have a regular day job. I have a nine to five job. I'm not always the loneliness guy. Um, and indeed, it's where the money comes in to, um, uh, to, 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 to be here. But uh, I have really missed the time that I have in my day for during my commute. And I had been walking into the office and home that had been about a three and a half kilometer walk. So seven kilometers each day I would walk, 
It sounds like something that, you know, back in my day, I walked seven kilometers to school. Um, but, <laughs> um, but, but I miss that because my commute uh, has been from this very seat that I'm sitting in now that you can see me if you're watching on YouTube to this seat. <laughs> Um, doing loneliness related work uh, after hours. So the commute uh, has been closing one laptop and opening another laptop. Um, and while we have a yard, while Jeff and I have a yard, sometimes that feels, you know, just a bit small. And when every time, you know, go outside, obviously wear masks, keeping physically distant from people and, and things. But I miss that time in my day to change gears. I miss that time to listen to podcasts. I miss, miss that time listening to music. I miss that time being, you know, awed by a sunset or trees that are in bloom or whatever it was. I really miss that time in, in my day to simply put one foot in front of the other and, and that me time. I've really missed that time. So in terms of those most important to me, um, it's actually been lovely. It's been lovely, you know, having, you know, Jeff's obviously obviously here, but uh, the kids have been here for much of the lockdown so far. And um, with my former wife, uh, we're what's called a bubble. And it's just actually been really nice, you know, having dinners together, um, just sort of being around together and, chatting and, you know, it's just, things feel a bit simpler. And in terms of connection to community, I've been feeling really connected to the community. So one of my, you know, one of you, one of you, like who reads my articles and listens to uh, this podcast, um, asked me to, um, uh, to, to, to write an article for a local LGBTIQ plus magazine here in Canberra called Fuse Magazine. And it's about loneliness and how we need to stop running from our loneliness and accept it as the gift that it is. So Alexander, I want to say hi and thank you so much for, for that very, just that, that fantastic opportunity to share my words with your audience here in Canberra and in Sydney. And if you haven't read it, go to thelonelinessguide.com, scroll down a bit uh, and you'll see um, uh, links to the, the Loneliness Guy on the web uh, and you can uh, read it there. Um, I've also been on a couple of other podcasts, uh, um, two with the Gay Men's Brotherhood, one on loneliness and belonging and then um, one on, on uh, coming out later in life. Um, and been on another podcast um, with a guy called Michael Rhodes in the US who is building a resource for men going through divorce uh, and talking about loneliness and divorce. And these, all of these things, all of these things have just sort of had me feeling very connected to where, to what I'm doing in the community of gay men of loneliness that I've been able to put my voice out into the world. I've also been speaking with awesome people um, like Pete uh, Baldacci um, uh, from the Genwell Project in Canada, um, been speaking to uh, other people and emailing other people who have been working on loneliness, uh, both here in Australia and around the world. And it's just simply been amazing. It's simply been amazing. I feel like absolutely lifted by the connection that I'm building with the community. So while I'm currently locked down, can't go out, there's not much open here in Canberra. The only sort of outings that we're allowed is, you know, to go to, you know, outside for two hours a day, um, uh, go to buy essential food, um, uh, go get vaccinated, and things, you know, the the the, the circle, uh, uh, or, or, or sort of the, the the size and scope of life has temporarily reduced. There's no gym, which is driving me crazy. Um, yeah, that that's that, that. While that has contracted, 
other parts of connection in my life have absolutely expanded. Um, and I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Um, but yeah, I do miss that internet, uh, in, um, what's the word? Incidental. I do miss that incidental human interaction from being in the office, that sort of, um, you know, those, those conversations that you have in the kitchen area or in the hallway or, you know, wherever it is, like just having other people around you, miss having face-to-face -face meetings. I miss sort of the, 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 the banter of, of the, the office. Never thought I'd say that though, because sometimes that can be really annoying and really frustrating. But yeah, it's, it's, it's taken this to appreciate how important that sort of incidental connection is in my life. And I've, you know, few people have shared that with me um, on their experience of lockdown here in Canberra. The other thing that, that I felt connected to is, is while, you know, being out and about, I've been listening to other podcasts. And one of these podcasts that I really want to share with you is the Alone Together podcast. Uh, and it's spoken by a, uh, by this, this um, uh, I think she's a writer and a journalist um, uh, and an educator, Peg Fong. Um, and her voice is amazing. I love, I love listening to her. And this, this podcast is Alone Together. And you can listen to it on, uh, on where you can get, where you listen to great podcasts is what I'm trying to say. But this Alone Together podcast talks about certain aspects of loneliness. And I find myself just completely lost in these episodes. And I laugh, I tear up. Um, it's beautiful. I can't recommend listening to it enough. And I've been just sort of tapped into the, to the, to the energy. That sounds like really hippie, <laughs> but I've been really tapped into what I've been hearing and it's really stimulated me and made me think of more content, um, that I want to be doing over the, um, uh, like into the future here on the loneliness guy, but just do yourself a favor, listen to Alone Together. It's been, it's been beautiful, but there's been topics on the stigma of loneliness, the importance of kindness, boredom, boredom and how important it is, but how we hate it, <laughs> how we like what we do to ourselves to avoid thoughts and feelings of being bored. But that's, that's amazing. Like boredom is, is where the beauty is, but we hate boredom so much that we do anything to avoid it. And the importance of connection to self when talking about healing uh, and, and building resilience for when we experience loneliness. It's just beautiful. And then also in, in you know, the, the connection to others and connection to community. There's been content here on the Loneliness Guy talking about um, uh, like hookup apps. And I had a great conversation with my friend, Michael DiOrio. And then um, most recently, um, there was a conversation with my friend, Andrew Reed, who shared his experience of the loneliness and the loneliness he experienced being gay in a straight marriage. And for many of you, that was the first entree into the work here at The Loneliness Guy. And it's simply amazing. And these conversations have been so nourishing mentally uh, and emotionally for me, as I hope they have been for you, because it helps me feel connected through my work to something way more, way bigger, way just may, way more awesome than you know what goes on within me. All of that to say is that, you know, feeling very connected to purpose right now, even though confined to home um, and, you know, worried, really worried that I would, you know, in, in being the only fully vaccinated person in this household, um, going to the supermarket and bringing, bringing COVID back with me along with the week's worth of groceries 
bringing bringing you know um, bringing a, a case of COVID home um, that you know I might not realize that I have, and you know um, you know make my awesome partner Jeff and the kids uh, unwell. But over the last few weeks, Jeff's been fully immunized. The kids are starting to get immunized. Um, uh, starting starting the process of being immunized and had their first vaccination recently. So that sort of stress of going and, and being in the community is starting to dissipate while still being very careful, of course. But there's been a lot going on over these past months and I wanted to share that with you because you know, I very much am in the living, in the business of living my life. And I don't for one minute want to say to you that I don't, that I have it all sorted and, you know, kind of living in this state of perpetual connected being, which is, no, I'm not. I'm human. I'm me. I still get lonely. Um, and, but, and, but <laughs> I'm learning from my loneliness. So if in answering those questions and in reflecting on your last few months, um, there's two things. One is now look forward, look forward to the rest of the year and set some intentions. How do you want to, how do you want to feel connected by the end of the year? Um, and then break that down into weeks. Break that down into days if, if needed. And then realise that every opportunity you have a decision. Can I make this a connective opportunity? Can I, you know, how can I show up as me and, and get the authentic connection that I need? You know, do I need to ask for help? You know, or do I need to, you know, can I ask more questions? Um, of this this person and you know invest some time not be so busy but invest some time in in um, in having a chat having a connective moment because that's that's what this is this is recognizing those opportunities to connect and taking those opportunities to connect not doubling down on busyness not letting our work life not letting um, other things detract or, or or distract us from um, from from that connection. Anyway, I think that's enough for now. This episode has gone on way longer than I intended to, but I, I do love having a good chat with you um, and uh, knowing that you know these reflecting on these five six questions um, is as helpful for me as I know it will be for you. So that's the invitation. Please do those questions. I'd love to hear your response. So send an email to me if you want. Connect at thelonelinessguy.com. Reach out to me on socials. I am on um, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, YouTube, and Pinterest. Um, and yeah, if, um, uh, I would love to hear from you if you've got any questions or, um, or, or feedback from me, but if you want a, want to join a, um, a supportive community that, uh, is as eager to support you as you are to support others, why don't come and join us in the premium subscribers group. Uh, at thelonelinessguy.com. Just go to, um, when you get to the website, The Loneliness Guy, click on the um, on on uh, the link, join the community, follow the links, um, and yeah, you'll be um, uh, you'll be able to join us and get the help and support that you need and deserve as you move beyond your loneliness. All right, there's a lot, there was a lot there, there's a lot more to come. Building a, um, a, a, a network of awesome coaches um, and other connection experts to help you move beyond your loneliness. And there's more to come for that over the next few weeks and months. So many things happening, so many things happening, but 
that's enough for now until next time be awesome everyone be you and remember that um yeah the world really needs uh, a lot more of you in it be awesome stay kind stay well and i'll see you next time